our class tonight is going to be fun. Um, it's a steak quesadilla with ca wonderful, yummy caramelized onions and spinach. And of course, there's a little cheese in there too. And then I'm going to make a chunky ranch guacamole. And then we have a, another cabbage salad because I think cabbage goes really well with, with, uh, with Mexican <laughs> food. And so this has got, ma but this has got mango in it and red onion. Um, and uh, it would have jicama, but we don't have jicama, and most people don't know what jicama is. So we're not doing jicama, we're doing radish um, and with a really nice light lime dressing. And then we're going to have dessert, another silly, stupid dessert. Um, but this one is using uh, chunks of angel food cake. You can also use pound cake with a homemade strawberry syrup, not the jelly glaze stuff, but you know, real strawberries and strawberries. And then I'm, we're going to do some chocolate on top and then a squirt of oh, ready whip. <laughs> so, um, and the ready whip, unlike the cool whip, the ready whip, the, the stuff that you spray out, that you go. That stuff doesn't have any high fructose corn syrup, unlike the Cool Whip. So we're going to use the Ready Whip. And then you can spray it well. Uh, that's it. Yeah, open. Thank you. Thank you. I might throw a little strawberry in there, too. That'll be fun. Yes. Thank you, Judy. That's a great suggestion. <laughs> and we might do that after the cameras stop rolling. <laughs> or maybe we'll do that for another segment, Jared. OK, here we go. We are making the uh, caramelized onions, uh, the steak quesadilla. Now, um, I did the steak earlier. This is um, a sandwich. This is a sandwich steak. And they're, they're thin. They're little. I don't have a grill. This isn't really a grill under here. Um, it pretends to be a grill, but it's really not. Um, and so I pan sauteed them. Um, I, I patted it dry, but really it looked like this, except raw, right? So it was a very thin, very thin steak. I didn't do any filet. I didn't do any slicing of the steak first. Um, and they're a good price on these things. Um, and I just, I just pan sauteed them with the um, with this steak and burger seasoning. Okay, um, I was once I fi I did it with a little bit of olive oil, and I was actually going to leave the fond in the pan, but I thought somebody might freak out, so I, c I cleaned the pan. I was going to use the fond for the onions, um, and that's what I would do normally at home. I would not clean the pan; I would use it for the onions. But uh, we're not going to do that tonight because I don't want anyone to go, oh, dirty pan, yeah. Not that I think any of you guys would do that. You'd all go, oh, fond, yum. Um, okay, so we're going to start. I'm going to go ahead and get my pan started to warm up while I show you a mandolin technique. And I don't mean, de -de 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 -de. I don't mean that kind of mandolin. I know, shucks. I'm sorry. I mean, this kind of mandolin where you could actually slice the tips of your fingers off, which I've done before. Um, all right. There's still a little fond in it, but not enough to flavor anything, unfortunately. But at home, once you finish your steak, if you're, if you're not grilling it, if you're doing a pan saute like this one, just leave the fond in the pan. You can even add some white wine into the pan with a fond uh, before you start sauteing those onions and yum. Just really, really good. Okay, so this is my little terrarium that has some onions already sliced, as you see. I'm going to slice the other half of this onion using my nice little mandolin. This is, a, this, is, um, this is a part of the system that I purchased, not from here, but it's got a, a grater and it's got a really nice julienne blade um, and it's got a, a tiny, a tiny grater. It's all quite nice. All right, and then I'm going to start slicing. Now, this has a really nice 
um, guard, <coughs> excuse me, that I'm not going to use right away. Very simple, right? <coughs> then you get these really nice. I'll wait. Oh, I love that. The, my food processor, because this one is lighter, and I don't need that much going on tonight. I'm not making anything whipped. I'm using the ready whip, so I don't need the whip, and I don't really need the food processor, so I didn't really need to, but I could. Um, I could have used that, but... Thank you. I love that, my food processor, and I would use it any time I could. But this is my manual food processor. So it, it makes these beautiful, really thin slices of onion. Very, um, and look, no finger. There's no finger at all in this one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Ma'am? Yes, as a matter of fact, you can. This particular gadget was purchased at Target. Target. Okay. Not cheap, actually. It was like 35 bucks. Yeah, but look at all the cool things it does. I mean, it's really a cool thing. And, um, and it's, a, it's, it's incredibly handy. And it stores nicely. And it looks good, you know. So... It's a Target product. Okay. Sizzle. All right. So I'm putting these onions in. In a few minutes, when they start getting caramelized, I'm actually going to add the steak into the pan with it just because there's some juices, as you see, at the bottom, at the bottom of this. And so I want to get whatever juices I can into those onions. Um, whenever you're, when you're caramelizing onions, um, you can do it this way, the way I'm going to show you now, how Robin Miller does hers, and this is a Robin Miller recipe. Uh, I'm cheating it by putting sugar in it. When, you're, when you've got a lot of time and you don't want to cheat it, you just turn this on very low and you just let them slowly, slowly cook. And they have so much sugar on their own that you don't need to add any sugar at all. <coughs> but it takes like 30 minutes to get that, to get the caramelization. This is a little faster, and I'm going to add sugar to it. But onions by themselves are already, have already tons and tons of sugar in them. They're very, very nice. What? I didn't know. You, you, you didn't know onions have a lot of sugar in them? So right now I'm sprinkling the, uh, the demerara, the raw sugar, on the onions. You can use regular cane sugar, but I'm using the raw demerara sugar that I like. I'm also using some kosher flake salt. I like that too, but you can use table salt, you can use whatever you've got. Yes, onions have a lot of sugar um, in them. Uh, people make like onion pies and onion tarts with, with, um, with onions. You know, the sweet Vidalias are really quite sweet. Uh, onions are a great vegetable, uh, absolutely. I don't like to grow onions though because, so what? I mean, you get one onion. 
You know, it's not like a potato where you plant one little eye, potato eye, and you get like thousands of potatoes, right? You just keep digging and ooh, digging, ooh, you keep, but onions is like plant the onion, onion. You get the same onion back, it's kind of weird. So um, onions for me is kind of a, no, just buy them at the grocery store type thing. Okay, and this is gonna go, um, I've got this on kind of medium high, and we're gonna cook this for just a little bit, and then I'm gonna add the steak into the onions and get them all nice and gooey. Good, you're getting smell -a vision awesome, that's really good. I missed you last week, Frida. Is your, did your, how's your house? Did it sell? It sold. I'm in the midst of chaos right now. Oh, <laughs> midst of chaos. Do you like the people that have purchased your house? Have you met them? I met them. They're coming from California. Oh. They're all right. Good. New blood. <laughs> Good. So they like us folks from Southwest Virginia? I hope so. All right, um, the next project I'm gonna work on now is while this is cooking away, I'm going to do the slaw, or as I say, the, I think I've called it the, um, no, what I'm, yes, I'm gonna work on this now because I want that to get all gooey. Um, The mango, what I say, mango, red onion, radish with dressed cabbage, I called it, so I wouldn't say slaw two weeks in a row. And people wouldn't go, oh no, slaw two weeks in a row. <laughs> Yuck. So this is just cabbage. Um, angel hair coleslaw from downstairs. I used, it's not, I used this similar product last week. Um, I've got in here radish, and I have red onion, and I slice that on the on the mandolin, just exactly like I did this guy. The onions here, and I'll show you how easy it is. Radish, little more shallow veg, so you have to go quickly into the guard before you put finger in there. But thankfully, the radish is already red, so, you know, <laughs> any additional, <laughs> any additional flesh um, might not notice so much. But I do, I go straight to the, pretty much straight to the mandolin. So, the, again, really, really nice, quick, beautiful, thin, thin slices. The onion, red, onion the same way, really pretty. It's just worth it. Well, oh, it's, I mean, it's, I would rather, it, it, it's, for me, it's, well, I have to, I'm always sticking, whenever I'm doing this manually, I'm always like this. My tongue is sticking out, I'm sweating, I'm trying to get every little sliver correct. I'm so, oh, it's rustic, yours are rustic, Judy. Okay. They can stay rustic. You can. You don't have to use it. But if you've got one, or donate it to somebody. Yes, get it out and try it. But just make sure you wear some protective elements on your hands, or that use the mandolins are awesome. I mean, I if I didn't have a mandolin, um, I would never make pimento cheese. Because I just, I hate this, you know. It's an ancient implement. It's been used for a long time. Yeah, I make hand salad a lot with a hand grater. Could I use the grating thing on that and do my thing? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, that's still, it's still, it's that, the grater is more like a box grater. Right. I mean, that's, that's not as big a deal as the mandolin or the julienne blade. Um, um, sometimes now, I actually go to the food processor and just and just smoosh it down there and just make the you don't what oh it takes the flavor out if you use the food processor it gets mushy 
I don't, I'm a, I don't use ham salad. So, but I, I probably, I'm vegetarian. Mango. Mango. You know mango. Miss um, Sarah knows mango because she's from Hawaii. Okay, so these, you only, this is mostly seed. Um, <laughs> Aw, if you don't have, you, so you've got a mango cedar, and if it's not centered exactly, it's hard, that's, that's crazy because you don't really know where the seed is until you, until you get in there. But man, is this a good fruit. Oh, some people are allergic to everything though. Is anyone here allergic to mango? Anybody? Okay. So everybody's going to eat the whole thing. Peel and all. Peel? No, we don't eat the peel. We don't eat the peel. We take the peel out. We kind of do the same. I've turned the. I've turned my onions down just a little bit. I actually um, take the fruit out of the peel. It's sort of like how you do the avocado. Is that how you do it? No, I peel mine. You peel it? That's you peel it? You use a peeler? That's just with the knife. You do? No, should I should I do that? that? Is that easier? You do it like the uh -huh. I take the potato peeler. You do the potato peeler? <laughs> well this isn't very pretty. Maybe overripe. Is it still going to be good? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yum. Smells okay. <laughs> They're tricky. We grew them in our backyard. You grew them in your backyard. Banana. Bananas. Bananas. Ooh. Okay, so you see this, I've, t I've turned my onions down some, so, but you can see they're getting nice and brown. Because I added sugar to them right now, they're kind of where they would have been at the 20 minute, at the 20 minute mark. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I'll try it this way. For this, uh, for the side pieces. Um, how many, how many kinds of mangoes are there? Do you oh know? Gosh, are there? But we're these are kind of like these are kind of what we get up here. Yeah. But is it like kind of? Yeah, it, oh really? It's sort of, sort of like the bananas. They're getting you big kind of. It's the only getting only one kind. Do you know what the mango came comes from? I mean, is it has it always been this way? Has it always been? I don't know. You know, there's I, some. You know, in my old age, I can't remember. Oh. <laughs> I just I remember like just eating these eating these forever. Um, you see them green too <laughs> when we were kids. Yes, green. Mm. Um, so there's. That and just and you so you just toss this a little bit. It'd be really pretty. And I'm going to add um, lemon juice. Excuse me, lime juice. Again, we're going we're using the volcanic lime. This is a um, organic squeezy volcanic lime that you get downstairs. And then I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of red pepper flakes. Now um, it says to use cayenne, but I like to use red pepper flakes, so especially in these kind of slaws, so you can actually see them, you know, so you don't get surprised. What's that you're 
This is the this is this great stuff. This is called salad herb blend. It's not in the recipe. We've used it before in the salads, but this actually rehydrates into really nice herbal blend for salads. Uh, yes, ma'am. Downstairs, it's a uh, parsley, red onions, chives, shallots, garlic, and dill. Ma'am, this is called salad herb blend. It's a lighthouse product. I use a lot of the lighthouse products. Um, I use the thyme. I use the cilantro because it rehydrates into into the real herbs. I'm putting a little cumin. This is cumin. Putting a little cumin in here and a little salt. I think we have olive oil goes in this too, right? Okay. I'm going to put the steak into this pan now with all the juices. Just let the steak warm up a little bit. And I'll mix the slaw. So we've got the mango, we have the red onion, we have the radish. We have the cabbage. We have olive oil, we have the salad blend, we have lime juice, we have a little red pepper flake, and a little cumin. What am I hearing? Is that a train? Is that like a Tweetsy coming through here? Doesn't it sound like the regular doo doo? Gosh, that was weird. Now this time, I'm actually putting it into a prettier bowl. I think last week I just left it in, the, in that bowl, so. Now this is getting nice and gooey. Oh, it's refined. I wanna get as much of that juice as I can, the, the uh, mango in there. I'm going to put this in the fridge. All right. In the top pot here, I'm going to start um, my strawberries. Now, the strawberries are for the dessert, and I want to get them going because it takes just a little while to get them thick. So um, these are just regular old strawberries. I split, I had two containers of strawberries, this one and then that one, and I put it into the pot with just sugar, the demerara sugar and I smushed it. It's, that's all I put in here. So this is gonna make a syrup for the dessert at the end. Spinach, for the quesadilla. That's looking pretty good, yeah? What you think? I'm going to clean off my board, rinse it off, carry on. All right. Um, all right. The guacamole, the avocado. I'm more familiar with the avocado than I am the mango. To 
check for the ripeness of an avocado. Um, you look at their skin. If they're bright green, they're, they're not ripe. Uh, they need to be a little dark. And then you don't squeeze in the middle. You squeeze at the end. If you squeeze in the middle, you'll bruise the fruit inside. So if you ever get a, you ever take an uh, avocado home and you open it up and it's brown around the seed, that's because some doofus has squeezed instead of at the top. So that's how you do it. I'm going to, so does that make a lot of sense? Okay. This smells good. You know how how strawberries give up their juice really quickly. Um, so when I put them in the pot this afternoon. Um, they were still just, you could, you knew they were strawberries. Now they look like strawberry goo, which is what I want them to look like. I'm going to move those up to the top. I'm going to turn off my oven. Everything's off, off, off. Okay, now. I'm going to make the guacamole and now again some people peel their avocados but I, I'm, I don't do that. See somebody's been nice and has not bruised this avocado so it's a really nice it's still a really nice fruit. And I'm going to be smooshing it and making guacamole. So it doesn't, it's, it's perfect, absolutely perfect. Uh, my strawberries are bubbling away. I'm going to turn them down just a little bit. This is a really nice avocado. Avocado has so many good things going for it. It's very good for your heart. It's got great fat to it. Ma'am? The right kind of fat. Yes. Yes, the right kind of fat. I'm sorry, I had to translate for myself. Sometimes this pit's a little hard to get out, that doesn't matter. <coughs> but you can actually, um, this is a really cool thing to do with avocados, is that they make a really nice breakfast cup for egg. So you crack an egg and put it into, the, into, this, into this nice little seed hollow, and then you put it in the oven, and it makes a really nice little egg dish, and then you can sprinkle yet more fat on top with cheese and salt and pepper. It's really, really nice. So someone who doesn't like avocados, <laughs> what's the best way for them to, uh, to mix it with something, yeah, to use it to get the benefit of it without having to look at it or taste it. <laughs> so, camouflage. you don't... I'm going to camouflage that. Um, hmm. 
Yeah, guacamole, you know, chips do a lot for, if you don't like avocado, um, kind of hard to like a, a guacamole, you know, so um, uh, I've actually made, I bless you, I've made a pudding with this before. I made it here with us. It was a chocolate pudding I made. Um, and that was one, it was winter or so ago, I believe. Um, okay, so what I'm making here while my strawberries are moving on is, uh, is the ranch guacamole, chunky guacamole. And I'll make sure whenever I make, put these quesadillas together that the guacamole is on the side so you can just take it or leave it. You're welcome. Cilantro. Tomato. Okay, so what we're making is a, a ranch guacamole. So I'm using ranch dressing, onion, You know, uh, uh, I s used to hate A-word foods. I used to hate asparagus. I used to hate avocado. It's weird, but that's just the way it worked. Um, and then I started doing just little, little, little tastes. Little tastes, just working my way up to it. And um, I mean, so you don't get really neurotic about it. You just do little tastes. You don't, you can't have tomatoes. Is it a is it an allergy thing or a nightshade thing? You can't do potatoes either, or no, just no. It's uh, just tomatoes. Just absolutely tear my stomach. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to pull a little off to the side for you without tomatoes. I'm going to dump some some uh, ranch dressing there. Okay, I'll try. Good. Some of your ranch dressing. Are you okay with cilantro, or can you do cilantro at all? Tomatoes is the only thing I can. All right. See, the good thing about cooking for yourself is that you can do whatever you want to do. If you don't like tomatoes, you don't use tomatoes. All right, this is, ah, this looks really good. Very colorful, nice and chunky. Okay, so now we have our guacamole. I'm gonna put a little salt in it. The strawberries are smelling really nice. I'm sorry? Strawberries are snapping. Yep. Now getting big whiffs of strawberry. Okay. This is gorgeous. This is big chunky guacamole. Really easy. Do you guys make guacamole? Besides you, you don't make guacamole? You do? Oh, really? Oh, good. Oh, daily guacamole. Um, this is looking really good. Um, I'm going to start the quesadilla.
I don't know why I've got this thing for the south of the border menus recently. The last two classes we've done. And then the time before that I did a fajita. Holy smoke. Last week was enchilada. This week it's quesadilla. Okay. I'm going to take this off and let it cool down just a little bit. You guys can let it thicken up more if you want. It does. Doesn't it smell good? Um, how's my time? 7.05. I'm going to put, um, so we've got the guacamole. We have the onions and the steak done. I've got the strawberries, the strawberry syrup done. It's going to cool down just a little bit. I have your special, extra special guacamole, no tomatoes. Um, okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get um, the angel food cake croutons into the oven. Um, so, what this is, um, it's angel food cake. It's purchased angel food cake from downstairs. You can use pound cake if you prefer, but it's summer. I like it lighter, a little bit lighter. So I'm using angel food cake. And I just want to toast it just a little bit. So I'm going to put it on a sheet pan. I've just torn this angel food cake. I didn't, I didn't do a meticulous cutting of it. I just tore it. So, I mean, what's not to like? Angel food cake, strawberry, and chocolate. It would be delightful. If you were going to go really fast, you'd put a banana in there too, you know, if you were going to eat it immediately. Because bananas tend to go a little brown. I you love don't. this idea of toasting it like this. Mm. Do, do you like this idea? That's why they pay me the big bucks again. <laughs> because I, I have these, I do these things. Don't let me forget it, okay? It's going in there now. It's oven, not oven. I want them to dry toast, you know. Okay, these pans are hot. That needs to be off. These pans are hot. Um, so what I want to do now is start my quesadilla. And uh, I build the quesadilla not like we built the enchilada last week. This is a lot quicker. have the steak there. I've got the two. These are flour tortillas, the eight-inch flour tortilla. So going up to medium high. I'm supposed to put some pan spray in here. Excuse me. If you have a gas burner, don't do this. Don't spray <coughs> on a gas burner. You lose your eyebrows. Yeah, because of the propellant. You don't want to do that. 
And you don't want to slosh whiskey around either. So no drinking whiskey while you're... Shucks! I know! All the fun's gone. Okay. This is a big tub of spinach from downstairs. Several ways you can do this. You can um, put butter in these pans if you want. You can put olive oil, canola oil. I've just sprayed them. You can do whatever, whatever's handy for you. Okay, then I'm just going to start adding food. And in a, in a perfect world, what you want to do is you want to lay all your tortillas out on clean countertops like mine are, and then do the distribution. So nobody feels like, oh, got more steak than me. We're going to split these in two, so there should be plenty for everybody. This is a radish, not my fingertip. Just letting you know. So we've got all these beautiful, this, all this great steak and some caramelized onions. Looks really good, right? Yum, yum. Yum, yum. You're good, don't have to worry about me. I don't eat this. So I'm not going to be. What? You are a vegetarian. I am vegetarian. But I do know how to cook a steak. <laughs> I know. Are you ever tempted? Uh, no. no. Not really. Uh -uh. I, uh, no. I, once in a while, actually, what happens is, is that I go places and. Um, People are doing like shows. They're doing food shows, and um, so if there somebody's cooking something awesome and they want me to try it, I'll try it. Unless it's something weird like tripe, um, which I'll have to just say I'm so sorry. I have a hair appointment. Got to go. Um, yeah, got to go. Sorry, looks great. You didn't use the whole thing? Because it goes down pretty quickly, yeah. Frida. Don't you think it? Well, it calls for a full cup. And I put four gallons. Yeah. Well, I, you can just keep adding more and just forget what they say about putting so much in. Just keep adding to it. Um, you can put it in a saute pan with a little olive oil and have a really nice side dish. Okay. So I got these go on top side down for just a minute or two. If you have if you have a grill, this works really great. Um, mm -hmm, goes pretty quick. And you just want to get the cheese melty. That looks nice, right? I'm going to put another one in. This is a skin, not mine. This is an onion skin. 
silly Beth. Okay. Excuse me, I'm going to get a plate. Move this quesadilla off. I use my hands a lot on these things. Um, you can too. They do get a little warm, which is the point. You can also use, um, you know how you make grilled cheese with, a, with a, another pan on top? You can do that if you want to hurry up the process. Um, and we're going to use sour cream. We're going to use the guacamole tonight, but you can use sour cream for these. You can use um, more salsa or salsa if you prefer. The spinach is wonderful in this thing. Let me check my. Cake. Aha, see? Oh, I forgot about the cake. Uh, that's right. That's why you don't get paid the big bucks. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Um, I know, I know. I actually have a timer, but I don't want it to ring while I'm with you guys, so. Um, also, I'm going to go, I'm going to put the, these are chocolate chips uh, with a little butter that kind of makes a ganache, I think. Put this in the microwave, three sec, 30 second bursts. I uh, put a tablespoon. That's with a whole um, with a whole pack of a whole pack of Food City brand semi sweet chocolate chips. Um, also has an ingredient for chocolate chip cookies on the back. Back of box awesomeness. I baked the angel, toasted the angel food cake at 350, 350 degrees. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm going to make these a little smaller so people can have more than one. These are so nice and gooey and really pretty. Am I throwing food at you guys? Ah, that's me. Just throw it around. All right. Thirty second burst. 
and stir. Not a very good steak knife. But you guys are getting the, the gist of it. Sick of all those people who didn't come to the class tonight. They won't get to have any of this really fun food. This one is a little cooked. If they um, become overly cooked, they get stiff. It's okay. It's still tasty. I grew up on everything burnt. What? I grew up on everything burnt. I like everything well done. You like everything burnt, Judy? Mm -hmm. Ah, you guys are so weird. Okay, so adding, adding the, the butter to this stuff, to the chocolate chips, um, will make a little bit of like a, if you put, um, this is fun, if you put a big dollop of coconut oil in with your chocolate chips and melt it like I've just done, it makes a magic shell. So you, if you, when you put it on cold things, like if you put it on ice cream, it hardens up like that, and it makes it crunchy and just so fun. So keep that in mind. Dollop, kind of a nice sized dollop. No, just the coconut oil. And if you look on the magic, I swear to God, you guys, you look on the magic shell container, it says the same thing, coconut oil. And you go, oh, I can do that. And you say, yeah, you can do that. Crunch. Hear this? This is a little crunchy. But still plenty for all, I think. I'm going to cut these, too. Okay. I'm almost ready. Loaves and fishes, yet again. Every class I make, the meals are usually just for four people, but they become appetizer portions and so everybody gets a little bit. Okay, um, now for the dessert, what I want to do is get a nicer bowl, don't have it. Okay. I'm just going to pile it in this bowl. And so this becomes like a trifle, trifle. So let's put the toasted pound cake down. It's toasted. And then I'm going to put some strawberry syrup. Just a little strawberry syrup. Oh, it smells really good. More cake. Not guacamole. Don't put guacamole on. And you'll surprise your guests. This is the slaw. And the mighty important ready whip. 
when she was ready for it because we live alone and we don't <laughs> need a whole thing a tub of whipped so cream. I didn't even know it was healthier. Ah, there you go. I just use it because it's, it's, it's fun. You can actually make it. This is 730. Just want enough so everybody gets kind of a dollop of chocolate, too. You put more butter in it, and it becomes more viscous, uh, more uh, light, uh, drizzly, so you can drizzle better. Um, I don't like the high fructose corn syrup and chocolate syrup that goes in ice cream. So I usually tend to make my own. There are syrups out there that don't have high fructose corn syrup. Um, so. chocolate syrup, but it's not that thick. Would it work though? Oh, of course. Ch anything chocolate. <laughs> anything at all. You can I do it. Like yeah. Chocolate. Chocolate is just awesome, however you choose to do it. So this is like a trifle, big trifle. I was reading the ingredients downstairs, and one of them said dried cane syrup. Uh-huh. Dried cane syrup. Ma'am? Mm dried -hmm. cane syrup? Yeah, dried cane syrup. It's kind of like just sugar, I would think. I don't, but I, um, yeah, that's kind of that sounds kind of fun. I don't understand. It's just a. I mean, why don't why wouldn't they just use sugar, sugar? Unless it was a something wet, but. All right. Open up. <laughs> oh, giant pile of strawberries. And you know what? I didn't. And I'm not going to put the radish on. So you guys are just going to have to do without. Okay. So. I know, we always have to do that. Okay, so we have, this is our meal. So we have our steak quesadilla, caramelized onions, spinach, um, and cheese with chunky guacamole. And then we have our nice uh, mango slaw um, with uh, red peppers and radish. And then we have this giant strawberry with ready whip topping trifle. And that's it. Thank you.